Hi, this video is broken into two parts. In the description is a link to part two in this video if you just want to get to the Black Sun spot fix. The first part talks about the early history of Blackmagic cameras and the origin of the Black Sun spot issue with their cameras. Released in November of 2008, the advent of the Canon 5D Mark II that recorded 24p HD video from a full-frame sensor offered budding filmmakers the ability to produce a cinematic image at a very low cost. Vincent LaFerre's Reverie promotional video produced on that camera was a watershed in the democratization of filmmaking in general and is credited with launching a revolution in independent cinema. Many professional filmmakers embraced the 5D as well, including Gail Tattersall. The House episode Help Me, broadcast by Fox on the 17th of May 2010, was shot entirely on the Canon 5D Mark II by Gail, replacing the drama's usual 35mm film format. Shane Hurlbut ASC shot large portions of the feature film Act of Valor on the 5D Mark II as well. Many other professional filmmakers were experimenting with the camera at the time as an action camera or B camera on TV and feature films. However, the 5D produced a highly compressed H.264 Kodak at a measly 38 megabits per second data rate. For comparison, the lowest quality ProRes codec called Proxy is 50 megabits per second. The camera also suffered from rolling shutter and moray patterns as well. Additionally, as can be seen by this metadata look at a 5D clip, the camera was not shooting at true 24p, but rather at 23.976 frames per second, so Blackmagic was out to remedy these shortcomings. To that end, Blackmagic Design produced a 2.5K cinema camera that shot ProRes and recorded RAW internally to an SSD and offered 13 stops of dynamic range as opposed to the Canon 5D Mark II's 8.5 stops, as well as shooting at a true 24p frame rate. It used a sensor that was slightly smaller than a micro four thirds sensor at 16.64 by 14.04 millimeters. While this was a far cry from the full frame sensor size of the Canon 5D, the quality of the video that it produced was far and away orders of magnitude better than what the 5D produced, with its ProRes options and full 12-bit RAW. In April of 2012, they announced the camera at NAB and offered it in an MFT or Canon EF mount, all for the low price of $2,995 US dollars. Grant Petty, the CEO of BMD, stated that the camera was targeted at users of DSLRs that were shooting video. Grant felt that the recording quality of the DSLR was terrible and set out to remedy this. Its form factor was rather odd one compared to other cameras on the market. However, the camera was embraced by the filmmaking community and was celebrated for its very high quality image. After sales of the camera exceeded BMD's expectations, they produced two follow-up cameras. These were the diminutive pocket cinema camera and the 4K production camera. Each of these cameras ultimately offered the same ProRes and RAW options as the original cinema camera. The pocket camera used a Super 16 size sensor and the 4K camera offered a sensor that was slightly smaller than a cinema's Super 35 sensor. While the pocket camera offered the same 13 stops of DR as the original cinema camera, the 4K camera lost one stop. It only offered 12, and this was due to the sensor being a global shutter design that eliminates the rolling shutter artifacts that plague many other CMOS sensor-based cameras. The pocket cinema camera was offered at the super low price of 995 US dollars, and the 4K camera was originally going to be 4K US dollars. I suspect this was inspired by the original mantra of Red Camera's statement that they would produce a 4K camera for 4K dollars. That never materialized from Red though. Once the 4K camera shipped, BMD actually dropped the price of it down to 3,000 US dollars. 
While these BMD cameras were generally praised, they did have their limitations and issues. One of the biggest complaints was the black sunspot artifact that both the original 2.5K and 4K cameras exhibited. This artifact can occur in certain CMOS sensor designs, and BMD was not the only victim of this. The Sony A7S II had the exact same issue as can be seen in this image here. This artifact could show up when the camera was facing the sun or the sun was reflected off of surfaces such as glass or glossy surfaces such as car paint. This issue on the two black magic cameras, the pocket camera never suffered from it, uh, was a significant pain point for the users of the camera and they were very vocal about the issue. Initially, BMD stated they could not resolve the issue, but with the release of DaVinci Resolve 12, they added a feature to allow users of these cameras to remove this artifact from any clips that exhibited it. Just as an FYI, if you're seeing this kind of artifact in your images, this is not the black sunspot, but rather you have a dirty sensor. Time to take the camera to a professional and get it cleaned. This feature has been carried forward in every version of Resolve since version 12. I'll be using version 17 to demonstrate this feature. Once I've loaded up the clip that I want to correct, I create a timeline using the clip. Once I have a timeline created, I go over to the color page. Make sure you have the clips element turned on in the UI so that you can see your clips in the timeline below the viewers like this. Now right mouse click on the clip that needs the black sunspot fix. Towards the bottom of the context menu, you'll see the apply black sun highlight correction element. Choose it, and you're done. That's it. No tracking with a power window or anything else. Resolve takes care of it all. Okay, that's it. I hope this helps someone out there. If you liked the video, please click like, as that helps other folks find it. And until the next video, take care.